One of the most important tools in physics is a mathematical tool called calculus. Calculus is essentially the study of how things change, which is why it's so important in physics. If you want to know, for instance, how something's position will change over time, its velocity, you need calculus. If you want to know how a black hole's mass will change over time, you need to use calculus. Nearly all equations in physics are differential equations, a particular type of equation that's a part of calculus. So what exactly is calculus? Consider a straight line such as this. Obviously, its height is increasing as the distance increases. We need a way to quantify this. Well, it's fairly simple in this case. You can see that it's a straight line, and every time we travel 2 meters along the distance, its height increases by 3 meters. So we can say the rate of increase, or known as a gradient, is just 3 meters divided by 2 meters. Or simply, this gradient is 3 over 2. So let's think strictly what we did here. We measured the distance it travels along the distance of a particular period between two points. Let's say between the points 1 meter and 3 meters. From this, we get the change in distance between these points, simply 3 minus 2, or 2 meters, the distance of 1 point minus the distance of the other, shown here by the orange line. Then at these same points, we get the height. So at this point at 1 meters distance, this height is 1.5 meters. Then at the point at 3 meters distance, it's 4.5 meters. So the change in height between the points is simply 4.5 minus 1.5 meters, or 3 meters, shown by the green line here. Then we can just divide the change in height, or the change in distance, and we get the gradient of 3 over 2. Now let's try this again without any particular values, any particular numbers. Well, we know what we want is the change in distance, which is the distance at point B minus the distance at point A. Let's say the distance at point B is the distance at point A plus a small change in distance, which we'll donate as H, and the distance at point A is just A. So the change in distance, which we'll call delta x, delta is a Greek letter, which is the triangle symbol here, and it just means changing. And the x is what we're using as zone 8 distance. So delta x means change in x. And this is a plus h, the value at point b, minus, minus a, the value at point a, or just h. Now this li line is just a function that takes the value of distance and outputs the value of height. So we'll donate, it, we'll donate it f a function and say fx is the height at the point x. So the change of height, which we'll donate as, y, as delta y, is simply f the distance of point b minus f the distance of point a, which is f a plus h minus f a. So now the gradient, the change in y or the change in x, is given by this. Just to show all this works, let's say a is 5 and h is 1. We can see then that f a is f 5, which we see is 7.5. f a plus h is f 6, which is 9. 9 minus 7.5 is 1.5. Divide by h is 1, so we get the range as 3 over 2, as we showed earlier. So we've now got a general way to find the gradient of a straight line. But what if the line is curved, like this? Well, if we put, pick our point A and H, then we'll find the gradient of a straight line between these points. But this clearly, you can see, isn't the gradient at either point A or at point B. So the line lies close to not along the curve, as you can see from these two points here. But what if we decrease h the distance between the points? Well, the smaller h is, the closer the points are together. So the closer the gradient, the gradient between the points is to the actual gradient of point A, which you can see here. The line between the points becomes the closer approximation to the curve, the smaller h is. What if we take h to be 0? In that case, clearly point A and point B are right in the same place, so we get the gradient of point A. You'll find, however, that you get 0 over 0, since from our equation for gradient, we have this. If we can substitute h equals 0 into, and then we find the bottom of the fraction of 0, and the top of fa minus fa, which is clearly 0. This 0 over 0 is something called an indeterminate form. It could be any value at all. So how do we figure out what this value actually is? Well, let's take the case of fx equals x squared. Starting out with the equa our equation for the gradient, we should be using our values for fx plus h and fx. Rewriting it fx x plus h squared as two brackets multiplied together, then expanding them, we now find that we can cancel out the x squareds terms of each other. Now we can find out the h and arrive at this equation with no zero on the bottom of the fraction. So we can take the limit as h goes to zero and find the equation the gradient of x squared is just 2x. That's 2x plus h, where h is zero, is just 2x. So at point x, the gradient of x squared is simply 2x, which you can make sense of from looking at x squared. Clearly, as x gets large, the gradient increases, it gets steeper. 
and at the value of x equals 0, the function x squared switches from going downwards to going upwards. So at this particular point, the rating is 0, flat, as it switches from going down to going up. So in summary, to find the rate of increase or gradient of any function, simply take two points in the function and find the change in y over the change in x between these two points. Then decrease the distance between the two points, mathematically taking the limit as the distance between the points 10 to 0, as shown by this equation, which is the definition of differentiation most commonly used in physics. The d mean change, just like the triangles, however, means change as the limit between the points 10 to 0. I hope this introduction to calculus has helped, and if you have any questions, please make sure to ask.